Hey guys, Connor here at eTrailer.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Takancha Prodigy P3 brake controller for our 1995 Ford F-150. The Takancha Prodigy P3 brake controller is definitely one of the nicer options on the market. It has a proportional design, which essentially means it is going to sense the deceleration of the tow vehicle and then apply that same braking power to our trailer. Now it's going to automatically adjust as regards to the leveling, so that's going to give us some more freedom in regards to mounting. Now this is also, controller is going to activate immediately, so there's not going to be any pausing like there would be for a time delay brake controller. Now a couple features that really set the Takancha Prodigy P3 apart from the competition is number one, it has this boost feature here. So we have actually have three different boost settings, and this is simply just going to increase our trailer braking aggression. Now not all brake controllers have this, so this is a really nice feature even for some of the larger trailers. So unlike most other brake controllers, the Takancha Prodigy P3 has a very nice clear LCD screen here, which is going to be very simple to use, especially for first time users. Now other brake controllers have a standard LED display, and they're not as easy to read. The LEDs can go out over time and can create issues. However, our Takancha Prodigy P3, again, has a really nice LED display, which is very easy to use, and it's also very customizable. We can hit our menu button here, and we can go into the setup display. Now, unlike most other brake controllers, the Takacha Prodigy P3 offers a lot of customization. If we go into the display menu here, we can choose the brightness that we want the controller, low, normal, or high. We can set that and then press the menu button to lock it in place. Then we can go back to the display, and now we can set the color. We have quite a few different color options here. As we can see, we can set our brake type here, electric or hydraulic, we have electric. So once we press enter, we can confirm this and then we can go ahead and go through the setup procedures as laid out in the owner's manual for each particular trailer. Now the P3 does allow us to have five storable settings therefore we can create a profile for each of our five trailers. Now another feature unique to the Concha Prodigy P3 is the integrated safeguards. These integrated safeguards are going to protect not only the brake controller from shorts but also the vehicle in the trailer if anything were to happen you'd be protected. Now in regards to the sleep mode for the brake controller, after 15 minutes of inactivity, the Takancha Prodigy is going to go into a sleep mode, so it's only going to draw milliamps of power, therefore you don't need to worry about it draining your vehicle's battery. And now that we've gone over some of the features and benefits, let's go ahead and show you how easy this is to install yourself. To start our installation today, we need to locate the factory brake controller port. Now the factory brake controller port is going to vary by vehicle. On our F-150, it's going to be located at the center of the dash here, as we can see, hanging down from this little tab. And it's going to be a six pin connector with four wires coming out the back. And once we locate this connector, we can go ahead and take our adapter harness and simply just plug it in. Now we will hear a click when it's securely in place. Um, you don't have to do this, but just to make this a little bit easier to show you, I'm going to go ahead and remove it from this tab real quick so I can give you a better view of how the two connectors mate together. So you can see here, we have a six pin connector, there's six slots that matches up with the six slots on our adapter harness, and the shape of them is also very similar. So once we have those two together, we can go ahead and push them together, and we can hear them lock it into place. And once they're mated together, we can go ahead and just insert this little clip back into this hole here to secure it in place. Now that we have our wiring adapter installed, we can go ahead and find a place to mount our controller. Now the brake controller needs to be in reach of the driver and it does need to be mounted at a certain angle. I found a good place is going to be right under this power port here, directly below that. It's still within reach of the driver and it's not too bulky and it doesn't stand out too much. It's also going to be within reach of our wiring harness adapter, which is another thing we need to be sure of. Now if you see here, we actually have two different choices of mounting brackets. We have the more custom molded fit, which contains these two pieces, and we have the universal bracket we see here. However, I think this one has a little bit of a cleaner look, and it's going to work a little bit better in the location we chose, so this is the one we're going to use. Now in order to assemble this, you're going to want to take this bracket here, make sure we have the controller facing the right way, so this is the front, and then we want to align these two little knobs here with the holes we have on the side of the brake controller. So once those are in place, you should be able to snap the back down, 
and it should just sort of align itself. So now that all the clips are in place, we can go ahead and install our secondary metal bracket here. So we're going to simply place that over these two tabs on this side. And then we're going to use the included self-tapping screws, which come with the kit. Just simply insert these in and align the two holes. Now in order to tighten these down, we have two options. We could get a quarter inch socket and ratchet, or we could get a flathead screwdriver. Now once we have the two brackets installed and we have it inserted on our brake controller here, we can go ahead and get a better idea of what the mock-up is going to look like. So we're just going to place it down here. I think that gives it a good clean look and again it's still within reach of the driver and our wiring pigtail. Now we're actually going to remove this metal bracket here. And the reason we're going to remove this metal bracket here is because we're going to use this as a template to make our drill holes. We're going to go ahead and place it in the location we selected earlier. And we're going to make two small little marks here with a marker or a paint marker so we know where our holes need to be. Now that we have the holes marked, what I found easier is to go ahead and take our self-tapping screw and we're going to want to get this hole started. That way it's going to be a lot easier to set our bracket into place and then we can tighten screws the rest of the way down. So again, we're not going all the way in. We're just going to simply make a small hole here to help align our screws and prevent them from walking. And now that we have our pilot hole drilled, we can go ahead and attach our metal bracket. And now that we have that secure, we can go ahead and mount our brake controller. We take our wiring harness here and plug it into the back of the controller. Now notice there is going to be sort of a tab on this side which is going to align with the back of the brake controller so it only goes in one way. And once we hear that click into place we can go ahead and install our other two self-tapping screws to secure it to the bracket we just drilled. Now once we get both of the screws tightened we can go ahead and tighten them the rest of the way down once we get the controller in the angle we think it will sit best. Now the final step of our installation, we're going to need to hide this excess wire here. In order to do that, we're going to head, go ahead and use a couple zip ties here. And that way we don't have any of the wiring harness hanging down and you can't really see it from up in the vehicle. Now that we have everything hooked up, we've had our wiring connections made, we can go ahead and plug in our trailer so we can make sure everything's working properly. So once our trailer is plugged in, we should see this sign here with the two output numbers. Now just as a quick test, we can hit our brake pedal, which we see the voltage increasing. Now please keep in mind, since this is a proportional controller and we are not moving, the voltage output numbers are going to be fairly low with the brake pedal. However, if we use the manual override feature here on the bottom, we should see them go up to around 10 or 12 volts, which we can adjust in the settings later. And that's going to do it today for the look at the Deconcha Prodigy P3 brake controller on our 1995 Ford F-150.